what's up guys welcome back to my channel or if you're new my name is caitlin today is going to be a full day of baking i'm going to be making sourdough croissants sourdough hamburger buns and sourdough discard crackers so i actually started a lot of this process last night which i will show you um i'm about to get these things out of the fridge and start getting them ready to do a second proofing so i'm going to take you along with me i've just recently gotten super into baking and cooking especially with sourdough and so that is what we're going to do today we have some friends coming over tonight and we wanted to do burgers and so i've actually made these hamburger buns um several times before and asher and i love them so we decided to do that and then i also had a bunch of discard that i needed to use up and i kind of wanted to try something a little bit more savory or or just like we always do sourdough cookies or something like that with a discard but this time i'm trying out crackers so this is actually my first time trying the cracker recipe and it's my second time doing the croissant recipe so i am still a newbie at this but we're gonna go for it and see how it turns out if you're into this stuff like cooking baking homemaking motherhood make sure you subscribe because i am starting to create a lot of content in that realm of things okay so it is the day before and i'm about to mix everything together um, first I'm going to start out with the hamburger bun so I have everything that I need here for that I have two different starters this one is for the croissants I think I'm going to try to let it keep going up a little bit before I start mixing all of this together and then this one is for the hamburger buns that I'm about to mix together. This is the dough for the crackers that I'm gonna roll out and make. I've never made these before, so hopefully they turn out okay. I think I might actually get to this tomorrow. I haven't decided yet, but they can ferment in the fridge for longer and longer you ferment, the better. Burgers will need to ferment on the counter for eight hours. So ideally I could do this at night, but I really wanna get my peak starter here. Um, so I might have to wake up in the middle of the night and put them in the fridge. We'll see. Okay, I finished kneading this. Um, you wanna knead it until it is smooth and elastic. So that's what I did. Now it's gonna sit on the counter for eight hours, which means I will be waking up at one this morning to tuck her into the fridge, but I'm gonna put a damp cloth and then I made a little label so I don't get that and the croissants mixed up. Um, so I need to refeed my OG starter here and then I'm gonna relook at my croissant timeline to see if it makes sense to start it now. Okay, so I decided I'm gonna go for the croissants now. So for this one, all I need is room temperature butter. I actually had the perfect amount of butter left thankfully, and then some sugar, flour, salt, and the starter is what's gonna go into the dough. Once I mix all this together, it's gonna sit on the counter for three to four hours to rise, and then I'm gonna put it in the fridge overnight. So it'll put me at a perfect time, um, around eight or nine o'clock, I'll put it in the fridge, and then tomorrow I can start using it. Thank you. 
so first I thought I would start working on hamburger buns it's super easy as you see I just mixed all the stuff last night and it sat out let's see what it looks like here she is basically I'm gonna roll it out and separate it into eight different pieces and roll those you'll see what I'm saying um, and basically let them sit out again to proof for a second time out on the counter so that's what we're gonna do after that it's really simple um, so if you haven't made this before and you're in the sourdough game I'm telling you they're so good all the recipes will be down below I think I've said that like 50 times maybe already but um, this is a good one to try out super easy and very thankful for it because I feel like I can never find an actually like clean hamburger bun at the store at least any of the stores that we go to there's always like so many ingredients that i don't want in it and so i'm very thankful that i have learned how to do this So here are what the buns look like right now. They are going to proof and they should double in size. So you wanna give them space to be able to do that. So I'm gonna put a wet cloth over these and then put them somewhere a little bit warmer. I think I might put them in the oven and keep it turned off, but um, that way they are in a more enclosed space and let these babies proof. It should only hopefully take an hour or two. It kind of just depends on how hot it is where you are, but yeah. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, we need to get this to grams. Okay, so I'm going to put 250 grams of butter in this bowl along with, I think a tablespoon of flour. This whole block of butter is just shy of 250. It's 227 grams. So I need this whole block and a little bit more. Let's see how much this is. 250 perfectly wow okay 250 grams now i'm going to add one and a half tablespoons of flour so what i'm going to go for is i'm going to create essentially a butter slab that will go into my dough um and i'm really trying to get the butter and the dough at the same around the same temperature and around the same consistency um, because I don't want my butter to melt into my dough when I start rolling it out and folding it. So after I roll this out and create a slab with this in between two pieces of parchment paper, I'm going to put it in the fridge a little bit to harden up just a bit. Right now it's definitely too soft. It would melt into my dough. Uh, but while that is in the fridge, I am going to start rolling out my dough. So put parchment paper here. So we're going to scoop all this butter into the middle here. I feel like kind of spreading it out a little bit like this. It's a good start. Now I'm going to get my other piece of parchment paper and put it right here. So for this part, it's definitely helpful to have a measuring tape and one of these to help create straight edges and of course a rolling pin so i kind of need to just okay so what i like to do first is kind of create flat edges and then from there start rolling it out and then i can do this more and more as i need as you can see, it's kind of going to help me create a perfect rectangle here. 
Okay, so there we go. And we're going for six by eight inches. So let's see where we're at right now. This is already six and a half. And this is six and a half. So I actually need to make it a little, oops, make it a little bit less wide here. Try to push some of this in. I might fold some of this over because it's a little wide. So I'm just gonna push some of this in and redistribute it. Okay, let's see what we're working with here. There we go. This is six and by 10 so actually i actually need to do the same type of thing this way once you get this situated you're really not handling the butter anymore because it's going to be in your dough um so All right, so here we go. I have, it is six by eight. I, you probably can't see it, but I got it to six by eight. So I'm going to put this in the fridge for at least 10 minutes, probably a little bit more, because last time I did it 10 minutes, it wasn't quite ready, but you don't want it to get too cold because you want it to be able to roll out in the dough. So I'll start out with 10 minutes and check it and see what I think, but I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the fridge. Okay, now for my dough. Here it is. I'm going to roll it out, similar to how I just did the butter flour the countertop here. Take my ring off. I'm gonna do this similar type of thing of using this to get my edges straight and start manipulating the dough to get an actual rectangle. Okay, so I got it to eight by 16 inches, which is what we want. And I'm not gonna lie, it took me a good minute to get that there. And just like last time, I ended up cutting off some of it for the straight edges, so. Anyways, now I am going to transfer my butter into the center of it. So I just pull it out of the fridge. Feels like it's cool enough, but it's not too cool, which is great. Okay, so this is what we want. Actually, I'm gonna pull this down a little bit right there in the middle so now i'm going to tuck in the butter just by pulling this top part over like that and the bottom part like this just like that i am going to turn this i really need to flour the bench again reflower this and I'm going to turn it like this. Just a quarter turn. I'm gonna roll this out to a 10 by 20 inch. So, gotta do this again, get the measuring tape out. So the idea is that your butter is not going to melt, but just be dispensed into the dough. Okay, so I got it to 10 by 20. Now I am going to fold it like a pamphlet. So like this. Brush off any excess flour. Wrap it up and I'm just gonna stick this in the fridge for 30 minutes. Okay, now these are my butter crackers. I'm about to roll them out to 1 16th of an inch and cut them up. I already have the oven preheated at 375. Let's see how these turn out.
So now it's time for fold two. Taking it out of the fridge. I'm going to roll it out to, again, a 10 by 20. As you can see so I just preheated the oven and I'm going to do an egg wash and bake them for about 25 to 30 minutes and then let them cool Here they are all rolled up. I did most of them with chocolate in them. I need to wait for these to proof on the counter. Once they get bigger and they'll shake when I move the pan like that, they'll do that when um, they're ready. And then I bake them, let them cool, and that's it. Here they are. This is my egg wash that kind of came down, but they look good. Here are the finished crackers. I think it's a good discard recipe to use um, if you use crackers for anything and Dakota likes them, so that's a win.
Okay guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Let me know if you have any suggestions as to what I should make next. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.